to Dennis about his presentation. Because we've got a few minutes, there's a technical heap. Yeah, I've got heaps of stuff yeah. there. Um, I haven't heard anything. Because there's, something's gone wrong with the power um, here. And, um, <laughs> so, I don't know what's going on, but we'll, we'll find out soon. Um, we've got a little microphones there, we've got our own electrical stuff here operating. Any quick, Isabel? I'll just describe Dennis. <coughs> My daughter, she has given back her birth certificate. Isabel, Isabel. No, use it. Use it again. Come, 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 come up here so we can. Back. She gave it back. We want to record it, so. She's given it back to the Governor of Queensland and the Attorney General of Queensland, and also to the Governor General, George Brandis, and to Sir Peter Cosgrove, <coughs> the, the Governor General and the Attorney General. So she's given it back state and federally. Mm. In doing so, she also gave back her Medicare card. She had a full-time job as a teacher. She, so she wasn't on Senate. She didn't have to go down to Senate office and hand in her Senate payment, but she gave back her tax file number. She gave everything back to the government, state and federal. And you only go to four people. You don't go to the Queen or the Prime Minister or the Premier, because they voted in at a general election. You go to people who are sworn in, who are representatives of Her Majesty. They're the Governor of the state, the Governor General, and the two Attorney General, state and federal. So she's given it all back. <coughs> they've accepted it, they've accepted it because when she was working and when she had insurance and she was paying superannuation, she put me on her mother down as the next of kin. So they've responded and they've recognised that I am um, the executor of her estate because she told them, you came here illegally and you forced the Crown's estate on my tribal and my daughter is Nudjan. And she said, you forced your estate on my estate, Nudjan. There's two estates, my tribal estate, Nudjan, and you did your estate of the Crown. So I'm telling you, pull back your estate because my estate is here and I've given everything back. And um, so she stands in the position as a sovereign. They recognise that. They sent back her superannuation and all her insurance from the common, common sure and they've given it to me, the executor. I don't want it. So I have to give it back to the public trustee of Queensland. They can look after it. If she's incurred any debts, any fines, not paying, um, any fines through spur, the state penalties enforcement register, through speeding, you know, general crap like that. If there is any outstanding debt out there, I'm not going to be liable for it because they can come after me in the Supreme Court. So I've given it back to them. I said, you look after it because you illegally put all that shit on my, on my daughter. I'm not going to be her um, executor. You, the, the public trust, deal with that. So that's OK. Then she informed the government that she wanted to decolonise her estate, Nudjan. They wrote back to her. Michael's got the letter. They wrote back to her and they quoted Marbo and Porco versus the Commonwealth. That's their response to my daughter, um, telling them in her intention of decolonising her tribal estate. She told them now that the name that they gave her, that the, that the entity, her name was Narissa Anderson. She now uses her name, Narissa of Nudjan. They recognise that. She tells them, don't you ever write to me through Australia Post. Email me, cyber. Email. They do. They, they email her. She, ex she, she receives nothing from them in written form. If anyone does write to her, like the Commonwealth Bank because of insurance, I send it back to them and I go, this entity deceased on whatever day she came out to be a sovereign, this entity deceased on the 11th of July, 20 da da da, -da um, refer to the Governor of Queensland and the Attorney General because they've got all the documentation and they accept it. So she receives no mail and if anything does come, we send it back. And we always say, refer back to the Queensland Government. They know what we're doing, they know, they know how the game is played out. And um, so far it's working, so far. She doesn't drive up there, I don't know if you've heard of um, Jeremy Guy Morimu. He puts his own He's number... TV, yeah. Um, he puts number plates, the dingy number plates. Well, they're neighbouring tribe to my daughter and then they have this driver's licence. My daughter doesn't do that. She does have identification, tribal identification. It's accepted. She flies all around Australia on planes. It's accepted. She goes into RSL clubs and clubs. She swipes and it's accepted. It's accepted. Her sovereign idea is accepted. And I say to her, use it as often as you can because that is the evidence that it's been accepted so that we can show other people out there that you don't need their crap, that government ID, you can have your own sovereign ID. And it works. 
So then we thought we'll go up a notch. And brother's right here about the birth certificate. It is a load of garbage. You don't need it. Go tribal. But, but what I'd like to point out is I use my legal fiction at my convenience. Yes. I want a pension. I want yes, to get a cut, yeah. cut rate on me uh, rego. <coughs> so with my daughter, she at my convenience. Up. Yeah, and I can He's understand that. It's not I easy. Not. <laughs> it's not easy to come out of the system. I'll have to ask you. It's not easy. It's, it's, it, it is not easy. Her family, my daughter's family, we look after her. So she receives no money whatsoever from the government. It's their filthy oh, lucrates, their filthy money. She receives nothing. So we support her financially. But like brother said, he, he he's not in the same position as my daughter is. Hmm. So we look after her, we financially keep her safe wherever she is, um, give her shelter, give her money to provide for her. Yeah, well, um, I'm saying use your legal fiction at yes. your convenience. Yes, um, that's what it is, it's a legal fiction. That, that name is That's a legal all fiction. the devil's work, work and that, all that devil's wealth belongs to us. So use it to rip them if you can, but then jump out of the way as they try to rip you and say, no, I'm a sovereign tribal original yeah. person, you so can't touch me. Over these two days, over these uh, two days, what we want to do is show you exactly how we can use all this here yes. and break down this power base yes. and how we begin to exercise our sovereign yes. inherent rights yes. and they are not permitted in any legal system in this state, in this country, to fight us yes. under their law because their laws are banned from dealing with any exercise of our sovereign inherent rights. Yeah. No, is no court. you do, not someone you ask for. Yeah. It's yeah. something you, have you do. You, you have inherent you sovereign have rights. And, and, so, and this is what we're going to flesh out here um, over they the next know. two days. And they do know it and they don't know how to deal with it. Yes, it's true. But the other problem is we don't know how to exercise it. We it's don't know how to make it happen. Because it's never been done. So my daughter then went well, to the UN. Well, a couple of instances of, of me doing it, I've got docs on speakerphone from my van at the embassy yeah. taking instructions from me as the elders of family to take the grandchildren off the children because they're on the ice and set up on their own and they've got support groups coming in. Hmm. They signed off on it, sent me the signed documents. I showed them to yeah. Michael. Yeah. Uh, another way is the Australian Federal Police recognises me the, as the uh, elder in residence at the embassy, and if there's a peace, prosperity and healing going on, I want them off the plot. Yeah. Okay. And they, they back up. Yeah. Okay, um, you, Richard, Richard's got a question. Things, okay. yeah. Richard, Richard's got a question yeah. or a statement. You've got a third of that. Yeah. In the courts. Yes. That's correct, yeah. Can you come up so we can record it? Oh, yeah. You got the, the mic. Robots, got the right up. up. Yes. Yeah. My um, question was to um, Isabel. Dennis. Dennis. Oh, Dennis. Um, yep. Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, Dennis, you spoke about the black op. What do you What do you mean by that black op? You know the black ops. Um, what's happening now? Uh, have, have you heard of the Jedi warriors and the Jedi councils? They're doing black ops. They did uh, ISIL. They did Al Qaeda. They did Boko Haram. They did uh, sickle cell virus, they did uh, Zerka virus, they did uh, that uh, Ebola. They're doing all those things. Just like they do the smallpox and the leprosy and the, and the venereal diseases when Cook comes through. Mm. Right? Right? That's still going on in these black ops. Now you need to know, there's a, there's a movie called Men Who Stare at Goats with George Clooney in it. And it shows you how they were set up in the five eyes. The five eyes are the UK, USA, uh, New Zealand, Australia and Canada. Yes, yes. Those five armed forces have Jedi warriors and Jedi councils in them and it was on late night, the night before last, um, about them and their sole purpose in this world is to go out and create wars and divide and conquer people. And they do it through NATO. Is, they do it through NATO. NATO, who benefits from NATO? America, Canada, England. How do they do it? They traverse the oceans. That's how they do it. They control all that Pacific Strip on the east coast of Australia. We're all, but, we're all Did that answer your question, yes. brother? Yes. Yes. That's why they're shit scared of Brexit. That's why they want, yeah. they want to re pull it back.
Because it's all to do about all of that activity on the waters. Hmm. Maritime law. Yes, so, exactly right. So Richard, China came to us up in Queensland and Russia. They sent their submarines off the coast of Cairns. We invited them. The Chinese came down. All the Chinese want from us, the tribal sovereign people, is to come straight down the South China Sea and straight through the Torres Strait out into the Indian Ocean. Right now they can't do that because of NATO. Hmm. The Russians can't come down the Pacific because of NATO. Hmm. You see the power, the oligarchical power? Yeah. We have power. Mm. Us as sovereign people have power. Can I? Can we I can just? Cut NATO yeah, out. We it, can stop them. Can I just say this? Um, with the with the um, when they had that um, what do they call it? The they G, gave us when a they when when they, when they had the G20, they invited Najin yes, uh, and, and the Nadinji. and Yadinji to be present at that meeting, but they didn't accept it. But here's what what Russia did. Russia Russia leaders. tried to Russia wanted to exercise yes. and challenge. The Australian yeah. sovereignty, so they sent and so what they did, coast. they put two s nuclear submarines into Yadinji waters, waters off yes. the coast of Cairns. Yes. They put two frigates that yes. that um, was guarding the airline carrier, yes. the big aircraft carrier yes. that Russia sent into yes. Yadinji waters. So you had two submarines, two frigates, and an airline carrier of Russia. They put them in off the coast into Yadinji waters. And the Australians could not, not stop them. move Julia them. Bishop could not stop they them. They couldn't stop them. They this can't. document, the Concealed Colony, yes. has been uh, that, circulated yes. yeah. to all the yeah. embassies, all the United Nations. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they know. Right. These other nations we, know we that it is our sovereignty and our domain. Right. Because I've been sent that document. Oh, yes. We're going to have to move on. The young fellow had a question there. There's a microphone behind you. Oh, okay. Yeah, just <coughs> um, my question's for Isabel. Isabel. Um, you said your daughter handed all her stuff back and work. Does she still work at all or any of no, them work? No, the, the old boss principal keeps bringing up to where's your daughter? <laughs> um, the we want to give her back a job and I no, nah, she's not interested in working. Because she's, the... she's gone to the UN now and she gave her paperwork to Banky Moon and to the High Commissioner for Indigenous um, people over the UN. So they've received that. She told them her intention of the tribe to decolonise. They've accepted it. Um, we've given our argument why we want to decolonise, why she, her and her tribe wants to decolonise. They've accepted the argument. Mm -hmm. We've given the argument to the government here. Um, boy, oh boy, are they shitting themselves. They really are. Jay Weatherall's on TV saying, no, on, on a DVD, saying he knows they're on Stolen Land. Jay Weatherall. Just to premier West, West, South this Australia. This is how we yeah. challenge them. Remember the Prime Minister, we're all getting backstabbed. And we went through so many Prime Ministers because we were telling them, you can't keep doing this. So we started off Kevin Rudd. We started off writing to him. Then the Prime Ministership got handed to Julie Bishop. And then she got voted, uh, not Julie Gillard. Julie Gillard. Mm. Then at the election, she got voted out and went back to Kevin Rudd. We mm. wrote to her um, about the farce going on in this country, then she got ousted and then it was back to Kevin Rudd. Then we wrote to him again, um, he got ousted, then it went to Tony Abbott and we wrote to him, we, we sent some really good stuff to him and he made a big fool of himself because then he said that Her Majesty, this is crazy man, we just killed ourselves laughing, the Queen of Australia knighted Prince Philip, a the Duke of Edinburgh, he's married to the Queen of the United Kingdom <laughs> and of Great Britain. We just killed ourselves laughing. Then he got stabbed in the back and then it went to Malcolm Turnbull. But at the same time in Queensland, we were doing the same thing. So we had a governor called Penny Wensley. We wrote to her three weeks. She shit herself. She was gone. Then it went to a new governor. We wrote to him. He was shitting himself. We wrote to the Attorney General, Carmody. They shit themselves. Next minute, Carmody's in Brisbane. We didn't have a Chief Justice for nearly a year. We killed ourselves <laughs> laughing. Then Carmody self-appoints himself as the next governor because De Jersey wants to go, so we're having fun and games right to these Yeah, I think De Jersey too. Mm. Peter, so Peter Cosgrove, he got sworn in April. By December, we sent the paperwork in November. December, and he wanted too. to go, but he's on a five-year commission. There's only two ways not to be a governor or governor general. The Queen sacks you or you die in office. Yeah. You can't I got rich on You can't leave a commission as a governor or governor general. Mm. We told them that. We laughed at them. Yeah. Stop being stupid. So they told Sir Peter Cosgrove to behave himself. Okay. We're having fun and games with them. So we've you're got all the relating to, to your... We've got your, all the letters from yes. Crown Law, their lawyers. Yes. We've got all the evidence to prove that yes. we're having fun and games with them. They don't know what to do. So in, in terms of your question, in response to your question, um, how does that apply and is she able to work? 
Of course she's able to yes, work can, yes. within her own territory yes. if she chooses yes. to. Yes. It's, it's not easy because you no. can't take their money. You can't take anything from their system. You've got to come back to your well, system. Well, I will not so take all we've got. They said to her, in, when she went to court for not voting, she said, um, she said to Crown Law, and Crown Law in the courtroom said to the justice that he felt like jumping out of the plate glass windows of the Crown Law buildings in Brisbane into oncoming traffic. The Crown Lawyer said that in the courtroom. Why would they say that? Because she said, your laws don't apply to me, and uh, because your law doesn't apply to me, I'm an alien. Now, I'm not a citizen of the Commonwealth anymore. I'm an alien. I'm, I am tribal. And they said, well, how do we know that you're even Aboriginal? She said, because I get my sovereignty and I get my identification, because they always say to the courtroom, identify yourself, are you? And that's what they said, are you Narissa? And she said, no, I'm Narissa of Nudgeon. How do you call yourself that? Because I get my, this is what she said, I get my sovereignty from my tribe, my elders. You know when you have to go and then you have to get your um, confirmation of Aboriginality? Well, you just get your confirmation of sovereignty from your elders from your tribe. Mm. That's all she, that's what she did. Richard. You have raised a lot of questions with me now. That, um, the, the reality of it all is this. Um, I know where I stand back home. I'm from Western Australia. Um, I know where I stand. And as far as I'm concerned, um, the minerals in the ground belong to us. Yes, they do. And they're making they money from our minerals. Mm. So the money they're using there is ours. Is ours. Yes, right. So we need to get those monies back. Yes. But, um, but the other thing also now, um, sorry, but I, um, <laughs> what I'm thinking now is this agenda here, um, I reckon we should scrap it and start talking about what we need to talk about. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm listening to this conversation as well, and, I, and the presentation that I've got is a carry-on from what we're talking about now, <coughs> but it goes into deeper detail. And it does. It's it goes into suggests. deeper detail of what we're talking about, so, and it shows you yes. our legal foundation, yes. and it shows how the courts in this yes. country, how the legal system in this country cannot sit and preside over us exercising our sovereignty. And we, we can prove it um, because the courts in this country have already agreed to it and already said that. The trouble we have as Aboriginal people is that we don't know our own rights right. under our law. If we knew our rights under our law, their courts has no right or judicial authority over us and our country. Yeah. Now, until we begin to educate ourselves about what those rights are yes. under our law, and we know that law, then we're going to be floundering around yes, trying to think like a white fella, yeah. or trying to sort of think, of a, think as a black fella, but thinking in a white colonised mindset. Yeah. And you get confused because you don't know where you stand. And so when you know that you're a proper black fella under our law, and you want to come under our law, and then white fellows have got no power over us. Right. They've got no jurisdiction. And we can prove it now. We can prove everything. The, the Queensland Police Service rang me up and invited me down and said, because we challenged them on the Queensland Criminal Code, we challenged them on the Queensland Justice <coughs> Act and the Judiciary Act. They basically said to me in a closed meeting, you're right. We don't really have any power over you if you're a sovereign tribal person. But then they said to me, we're still going to operate, this is what the Queensland Police Service said to me, the honchos up the big, up the big top honcho said to me, we're still going to operate under the Queensland Criminal Code and the Justice Act and the Judiciary until there is a court case that tells us otherwise. That court case is not going to happen in Australia. It's going to happen out of Australia, overseas. But basically that's what they admitted to us. So if you do come out of the system and become a, in, act in the capacity as a sovereign, they can't really do anything to you. And I'll tell you what happened. So in 1967 we had a referendum. Everyone thought the referendum meant that we became citizens of Australia. There is no such thing as citizens of Australia. There are citizens of the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is a family of nations. Canada, New Zealand, Great Britain, Australia. So it's a Commonwealth of nations. You become a citizen of the Commonwealth. There's no such thing as a citizen of New Zealand a citizen of Canada, a citizen of, New Zealand, of Australia. You're citizens of the Commonwealth. 
My daughter challenged them and she said, no, the 67 referendum was not about citizenship. No. And sister at the back here, I've given her uh, the annotation. In the past, when people went down to the law faculty to study to become a lawyer, their Bible was this thing called, and she'll hold, hold it up and show you. This, this book is now banned in Australia. It's banned. They don't want anyone to know, not even their white trained lawyers. That's, that's, that, that's banned. That's the quick and get America. That's the quick and Garen's defin definition and explana legal explanation of the Constitution of Australia. And every law student, that was their Bible at, at, at uh, university. That got banned in 1968, banned from being published. You cannot, it's banned from being published. You can only buy it in America. I've got copies on the USB. And, and, that, and that relates... They gave themselves a new annotation called Moen and Lum, so that's the new Bible of the lawyers in Australia. Yeah. That explains everything. The new one is all mm. condensed and you won't learn much from the new annotation. Okay. All right. And a lot of things happened. She started in 1968, because what the 67 referendum meant was we could return to our country of origin in the capacity as a sovereign. It actually says in there, we could return to our country of origin with safe assistance from the Commonwealth in the capacity as a sovereign. They didn't want us to know that. They tricked us. They just kept on saying to us, you're now citizens, you're now citizens. We're not citizens. It's a load of garbage. A lot of things happened after that 67 referendum. She started to, we, we can show you the hand side. She started to call herself the Queen of Australia. We've got a secrecy act. How the hell does a democracy have a secrecy act? Guess what the penalty for is if you breach it? Life imprisonment. They did a lot of underhanded things after that 67 referendum because they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know. So we can tell you, she stopped going to the Privy Council. She got sworn in as the, the monarch inside the Privy Council. When you die as a monarch, they ring the bell and they go, long live the Queen, long live the Queen. Even though she's dead, long live the Queen, long live the Queen. Then her heir and successor, Prince Charles, comes on and they go, long live the King, long live the King, long live the King. She's supposed to sit there in the Privy Council because that's her, as, as the Queen in Council. She hasn't been back to the Privy Council. When she celebrated 60 years on the throne, guess where she went to celebrate? 10 Downing Street with the Prime Minister. She's supposed to go back to the Privy Council. She won't set foot in there because she knows she's in big trouble. This is really serious in international law, but they don't want us to know. And they get those propaganda pushes like, Stan, I'm sorry, Stan Grant, Adam Goods, Marcy Langton, Larissa Brent, and all the rest of them, the propaganda pushes to push all that crap, recognise that we want to be citizens. Thank you, I don't want to be a citizen on that crap. I want to be sovereign. We want our people to tell us what to do. We don't need them over, you know, anywhere else in the world to tell us what to do. We can tell ourselves. We did it. We've been here for thousands and thousands and thousands of years telling ourselves what to do. We did a pretty good job until they came and fucked our lives up. So why do we still want them to tell us what to do? We don't need them. We have immense power, but we don't realise it. If the Russians can come off the coast of Cairns, and the Chinese come and secretly meet with us and say, look, all we want is safe passage straight down the South China Sea. There's five trillion dollars per year in shipping and customs, five trillion. And all they want is straight down the South China Sea, straight to the Torres Strait, out into the Indian Ocean for trade. Right now they're banned, they have to go the long way around. It's nearly a whole day of sailing and all that oil in their boats. If we get our sovereign capacity back and we allow them to come through, just imagine, we don't need mining. We can make trillions in shipping trade from them up there above us. We don't need mining. We don't even know what power we have as sovereign people. We don't even know. Okay.